Hello, darling. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Tawny Michelle, and we are not all love, light, twin flames, and unicorns over on this channel, so please keep that in mind. And welcome to your April 2021 tarot and astrology reading. Cancer, this is a big reading, okay? There's a lot going on here astrologically and in your cards, and we're going to talk about it. I'm going to try to get it all out because I have a lot coming to me right now for you guys. Okay, so the first thing that I really want to say to you guys is that it seems as though you feel stagnant or stuck in some area of your life or recently had been feeling that way. It feels as though you've been putting something off or that you have been just disconnected with something in your life that uh, has possibly been around for a while or um, is suffering now due to something that happened in the past, if that makes sense. So this month in April, you're stepping into this new energy of what's good for you versus what's good for everybody else and what's good for you and your future right? Because cancer, there's a lot of future focused energy that's coming up now, right? It's like, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? Do I want to continue on this path that I'm on? Or do I want to go somewhere else? And that's what March was all about. It was really trying to make that decision. It was really trying to come to that conclusion of where you see yourself. Where are you headed? What's the path? What's it look like? Where are you going? What needs to be removed in order for you to move forward? And now that we are entering into April, it's like, you are getting these glimpses of what's coming. You are getting these glimpses of where you want to go and what you need to do, but that involves some sticky situations, right? That involves a possible shakeup in some way, in some area of your life, um, or that involves a possible crisis for some as well. Because in March, you were almost being pushed a lot to forgive and take the high road and to look at things from a higher perspective, a higher viewpoint, to learn how to do something differently, to learn something new, right? But now it's like, okay, now it's time to grow up and put the big girl or big boy panties on and walk out the door and leave the BS in the past, right? Like this month is some real adult type shit. And when I say adult, I'm not necessarily meaning like adult versus child. I'm meaning like this is where you really put yourself to the test. Like you, you really show how to do things with a no bullshit attitude and make it look good while you're doing it, right? Like that's where we're headed this month for you, Cancer. So there is something that you've been stuck in the mud with though. There's something that you've tried to get out of or that you've tried to overcome in some way, but it keeps pulling you back is what I'm really feeling for a lot of you. And I mean, I could be wrong, maybe not. You know what I mean? Like, remember this is a general reading, so not every single cancer that watches this uh, will resonate, right? Like not every single one of you guys will resonate to every message. So do keep that in mind. But with all of this energy in your 10th house, you are being very future focused with your life, your career, your plans, what's ahead, what do you need to plan for, what are your goals, what do you want to achieve in life, and what's holding you back, right? Like what's holding you back from achieving that? And part of it could be your own self-worth. Part of it could be your own insecurities. Part of it could be something that happened in the past that you maybe haven't recovered from fully. And I think this month really starts off with you finally facing and dealing with that shit from the past, the trauma, the insecurities, giving yourself time to process it and deal with it, giving yourself some rest and allowing your mind to be mentally cleared so you can finally move on. Allowing yourself to be healed so you can finally move on. 
is really what I'm seeing. I mean, those were the first three cards that came up and it's just very clear as well as with your astrology, you know? I mean, you have Mars in your 12th house right now. What needs to be surrendered that you've been fighting from the past? What cycles, habits, subconscious patterns do you get stuck in? You know, like what repressed anger, resentment, trauma needs to be faced? Mars is giving you the strength and courage to do that. And really like spirit, source, the universe, whatever the fuck you want to call it, um, is really showing me this, right? Disconnect and boredom. There's something, like I said, that you're disconnected to, you're bored with, or that you're stuck or stagnant with. There's some kind of stagnant energy here. We also have choose wisely, right? So you've been stuck trying to make this decision probably for a while, probably for a little bit now. And then we have moving on. It's time to move on. It's time. This month is your time, Cancer. It is time for you to stop putting up with the bullshit, whatever it is, whether it's work or relationship, whatever. It's going to be different for different ones of you. I'm getting a little bit of both, honestly. And there's something like, this is where you guys could help me out if you know what this is talking about, but you guys have a lot of 8th and 12th house shit going down. Um and that have already kind of been going down, but are really starting to be present this month in April. And what I mean by that is all of the shit in Aquarius in your eighth house and then Mars and the North Node and Gemini in your 12th. And the thing that these two houses both have in common is they both deal with crisis and they both deal with things that are going on behind the scenes that aren't necessarily right out in front of your face. Um, the 12th house deals with seclusion and getting away, institutions, hospitals, vacations, taking a break from reality. You know, it deals with mystical experiences, healing and spirituality. And then the eighth house deals with um, other people's resources, finances, money, business, taxes, debts, things like this. So there's something here like behind the scenes going on. Maybe you are, I mean, it could be as simple as maybe you're doing a lot of research on some kind of mysterious or uh, a cult-like thing or something for some of you. Others of you, uh, you know, could be trying to get finances straight in order for you to, you know, take a vacation or to be secluded or something like that. But there's something here going on behind the scenes. And I'm really interested to know if, uh, if you've seen those themes in, in some way in your life already. Um, and if you do this month, but basically, this month, we have a lot going on in your 10th house sector of career, authority figures, uh, your future, your goals, your achievements, like I was kind of seeing before. And so you're getting to this point where I think that you feel you've been working really hard on your finances or on some kind of debt or some kind of um, something that you feel you owe. It doesn't even have to be money for some of you. Um, you know, you're trying to be resourceful here. And I feel like you've been doing a good job and some kind of work that you've been doing is finally going to pay off. Like you're getting through it. And like I said, you have the strength to move through it. You have the strength to keep going. You're facing something really big this month that is going to give you so much relief, whether it's financially, whether it deals with business, career, or like I said, for some of you, a relationship, but you're facing something this month that's going to give you so much relief. You, and, and once you do that, you're taking some kind of risk, wheel of fortune, possibly with a person, an authority figure, boss, relationship, partner, and you're moving on. Once again, six of swords. So there's definitely some kind of curveball that you get to a point where you're like willing to take the risk where material and physical things aren't as important to you as your spiritual prosperity. You're like finally getting out of the rut, Cancer. And then you get to a place where you can finally relax. You, you're relieved, right? Once again, four of swords. Like, <laughs> you're finally relieved. You can 
take a break, you can let your hair down a little bit and it's cool. And then the rest of your month looks beautiful. You start meeting the right people, meeting the right connections. You know, people want to talk to you. People want to be around you because then things start getting activated in your 11th house sector of Taurus. Once we get into Taurus season, Venus will be there. Mercury will be there. The sun will be there. Uranus will be there. You will get major insight, major collaboration opportunities. Um, people like connections and networking and marketing, like all of those things that deal with other people or that you may need other people for are going to pay off. And you're gonna have fun while you're doing it. You know, people, you're gonna be praised for it. You're gonna be possibly even a little bit popular towards the end of the month. And it seems like you have people that possibly wanna go into business with you or people that um, want to, use your business or use your services or offer you a job or something along those lines you have the right connections people that can give you opportunities like opportunities that you're wanting and it really seems like it's going to work out but it all starts with you understanding your worth you facing having the courage to face what you haven't wanted to face and make the decision that you haven't wanted to make, which seems like it's probably going to happen around that Aries new moon around the 11th. Maybe not right on the 11th, maybe a few days before or a few days after, but there's something here that you're facing and moving forward with that you're done with because that Aries new moon, I don't, I think I might've said full moon if I did, I'm sorry, it's a new moon. Um, that Aries new moon is happening in your 10th house sector. <laughs> in your 10th house sector, but it is squaring Pluto in your 7th house sector of relationships. So there could either be some kind of boss or authority figure or relationship or partner or collaboration or deal, agreement, commitment that is holding you back and you see it clear as day around this new moon it's been controlling you it's been holding you back or it's been manipulating you and this new moon is going to show you where those blocks are when it comes to certain people in your life and then through that you find the strength you find the strength to move forward. And it pays off because then the right people, you have now made space for the right people to come into your life. So hopefully that's making sense for you guys so far, Cancer. I mean, if this is really getting real. It really is. It's really getting real and facing reality. What do you want for your future? And what's holding you back from that? And why aren't you doing anything about it? And like, what's going on basically? Hopefully that makes sense. So, I mean, an, an amazing reading. It's just really about facing those fears and moving forward, you know, continuing to do the work on whatever it is that you're dealing with financially. Yes, it may feel like there's setbacks, delays, etc. but all you really need is to face it, to make the decision to face it. Doesn't mean that you don't have to be scared. It doesn't mean that you don't have to be like, holy shit, I'm doing something wrong. You know, like, yeah, you're, you're gonna be scared, but that's what the Wheel of Fortune is about. And it's on your side, it's upright, you know? So yeah, that may mean that the universe throws a curveball and you have to take that risk. You have to save yourself rather than continuing to try to save something else while you are losing out on money, on opportunities, on yourself, you know? And the situation itself is not healthy for your self-worth either. 
So it's just kind of like you're in this repeating loop, you know? And so anyway, so hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that's resonating with some of you guys. Let me know down below if it is. So on to the astrology. So um, yeah, like I said, Mars has been in your 12th house. It will be in your 12th house until uh about the 23rd of this month when it moves into your sign cancer then we'll get to that in a second but with mars in your 12th house this really is bringing out um possibly hidden enemies possibly hidden things that you need to address that you need to face um like i was kind of saying on the fourth mercury moves into your 10th house so um this is like really getting into some kind of action putting what you've learned last month in March to use this month in April with Mercury moving into your 10th house. You know, this is going to be a lot of major conversations with bosses, with authority figures, with, you know, about your career, um, about where you're headed, where you're going, what your future plans are, a lot of planning, you know, a lot of like, you know, thinking about your goals and where you want to go, where you want to be, um, especially like your long-term goals, you know. And then on the ninth, we have Saturn, like I was saying, in your eighth house, training the north node in your 12th house. So like I said, this is some kind of undercover energy here. Um, it could also bring up, you know, some resourcefulness, um, possibly lessons learning from the past, um, or even making a break for something in some kind of way, you know. Um, on the 11th is when we have that new moon in Aries squaring Pluto in your seventh. So this could bring up energy around deals, um, relationships, um, you know, power, power dynamics, things that may be out of control, um, fears, um, things that are hidden or shady in some kind of way. You could also see uh, themes of commitments, negotiations with authority figures or um, feeling like a relation, certain relationship, commitment, agreement, contract, etc. is holding you back from where you want to go in life or with your future in some way, or it could be causing you some kind of conflict or stress. So this is just going to be a good time, Cancer, for you to remember your own power and what you desire and what you want. And yes, you may feel bad for going after that and saving yourself, but you've been allowing yourself to drown so somebody else can breathe for a long time already, if that makes sense, you know? So, um, you know, <clears throat> I personally believe that by being authentic to who we are, we actually do other people a great service because when we're not authentic to who we are and we don't actually do what we wanna do and we repress it, we're not being ourselves anyway. So they're not even really getting the real us right? So they don't even have the accurate information about you, um, or they don't even really know you, <laughs> you know, as well to understand or to make certain decisions based off of that, based off of their own perception of you, if that makes sense. So being authentic to who you are also does other people great service, even if it doesn't seem at that, that way at times, or doesn't seem so at that time. You can't see how it's all going to play out. So um, once again, bigger picture, right? Bigger picture. So anyways, you have a lot more power than you think. And this month, it's about finding your power, finding your strength, finding your independence, finding the pioneer in you and going for it. What do you want out of life? Where do you want to go and do that, you know? So on the 14th, Venus will then move into your 11th house, starting to light up that really social area where you can connect to people, meet new people, network, et cetera, et cetera, friends, social groups, like-minded people, marketing, um, your ambitions, your goals, all of that stuff. And then on the 15th, we have Mars um, in your 12th, training Jupiter in the 8th. So this could be some kind of um, major opportunity um, or some kind of breakthrough realization or insight happening around that time where it's like, you know, whatever happens around that new moon on the 11th, on the 15th, I feel like this is going to show you a clear path to take, to deal with whatever happens on the 11th or to move forward with whatever happens on the 11th. So this is where I really think the path becomes very clear and 
you see the opportunity. You know, you, you finally see the opportunity. You see that you actually have other connections, other resources that are willing to help you um, and that are willing to back you with whatever that you're doing. Um, so on the 19th, we have the sun and Mercury also moving into your 11th house then, and this is where it really starts lighting up that space of networking, friendships, collaborations, acquaintances, groups, like-minded people, causes as well, uh, certain causes. And um, yeah, you know, so all of that stuff's going to be lit, lit up. Then on the 22nd, um, we have Venus coming into her conjunction with Uranus on the 11th, and then following that will be Mercury and Mars. So that week of like the 22nd is possibly going to be a week that feels a little bit uncertain um, or that feels a little bit random at times, but this can also be surprising contacts and connections, um, you know, or even innovative solutions that come about, innovative ideas or collaborations that come about. Now, there could be some type of, uh, you know, some type of certain delays with money, finances, resources, um, or even fears or something that's owed that needs to be addressed before you can move forward with whatever this is that comes up around the 22nd. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, on the 23rd, Mars finally moves into your first house, like I was saying before, Cancer. So this is where things are about to start getting very pumped up, very heated, um, very wild for you. <laughs> um, with Mars in your first house, um, the first thing that kind of came to me, especially with all of that energy in your 11th house, is that you could find yourself like being a part of something or fighting for something, fighting for some kind of cause, um, fighting for some kind of truth. Um, you could also find yourself being more in like a leadership or empowering type of position or inspirational type of position. You could find yourself, um, you know, doing something with beauty, food, you know, those Taurian, <laughs> Venus and Taurus types of themes, um, using social media for something as well. But also just with Mars in your first in general, you are going to be motivated to make brand new changes, to do brand new things, to um, start some kind of brand new beginning, to do something different, you know? You may be a little bit more moody or irritated or agitated at times than you normally are with Mars in your sign. Um, you know, you may be a little bit feisty or easily annoyed. So just keep that in mind. And it may be very easy for you to kind of say things that you don't mean out of like overwhelming emotions or something. But um, on the flip side, this is really good for getting motivated, getting into some kind of exercise routine, um, you know, working on your body in any way. So those are the good things about it. But definitely let me know how that ends up feeling down below. And then last but not least, on the 26th, we have the Scorpio full moon. Okay, so this is going to be a crazy ass full moon. And it could bring up some issues, changes, or endings um, with certain affairs that you have going on or certain partners or, um, you know, love affairs that you have going on, um, people that you're dating or seeing. It could bring up some things with that. It could also bring up some shaky friendships as well. Um, you know, but this will be a good full moon for really using your pain to create and to share the creation with others or to use that Scorpio energy of pain and darkness and intensity and, you know, the more harder things of life, the more emotionally difficult things and somehow use that with other people or for other people or to help other people in some way. This would be a really amazing way that you could kind of, you know, use alchemy to like transmute that energy and use it for something instead of like, you know, letting the, that time period get you all down and stuff like that about certain things or things of the past or whatever. But um, yeah, but this could, this Scorpio full moon could be a time where you're like cutting off certain toxic situations, bad habits, patterns or behaviors from the past, um, or even seeing how those things hold you back in some way from what you really want to do or from certain groups or certain causes or certain friendships, etc. So 
Anyway, so that is what I have for you, Cancer. Uh, definitely let me know down below if any of this resonated and how it resonated. If it did, I would really love to hear about it. And uh, if you would like to keep up with me throughout the month, make sure to follow me on my Instagram because that is where I post the most and am the most active and talk to you guys at the most. So um, yeah, but I will see you guys in my other videos. Thank you so, so much for watching and I hope you have a fabulous month, Cancer.